So I'm Gary Linkoff, and we're in Telluride, Colorado, and we're in a wonderful spruce forest, and we're here to collect mushrooms. This is a little gallerina. This is in the same clade with Russula, and it's a pale felidon, and we can identify it back at the center. If I can, I have it. Sure. They energize me. It's sort of like some people take vitamins. I just have to find mushrooms. In fact, I just have to think about mushrooms and I get excited. So here's a really beautiful mushroom. It's fleshy, looks clean. This is a really gorgeous <laughs> Cortinarius. I wish these yeah, were edible. Them. So this is Agaricus silvicola. It has, a, it has a long white stem, which is missing here. When I started, these were peripheral things. And what's happened is, little by little by little by little, they have become so dominant that I can't see the world without them now. Wow. You know, the big difference between gardening and foraging for mushrooms is, when you're in the garden, everything is right there. It's talking to you. When a tomato gets red, it is saying, hey, I'm ready, come get me. The mushrooms don't give a shit. <laughs> They're doing their own thing. And a lot of them are hiding. Morels in a forest are not trying to make themselves known. And this is true of a lot of mushrooms. Oh. See, mushrooms are very clandestine and very much the trickster. So they're hiding from you all the time. All right. It's an Amanita. I have to ask Paul about this one, but I think that this one is somewhat poisonous. Excellent edible. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Oh, it's poisonous. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's poisonous. I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> So one of the things that interests me about mushrooms is you see the, the, the omnivore's dilemma in a nutshell. Um, the fact that we have to be very careful about what we eat and we have a certain anxiety about what we should eat. Other creatures don't have that. So these morels, you know, which are very expensive and really fantastic mushrooms, one of the most delicious in the world are poisonous raw. We have to know the difference between um, a safe mushroom and a dangerous mushroom. And every time you pick up a mushroom, you are faced with that dilemma. Do I know enough to eat this? Should I eat this? Will this kill me? Will it not? And that's the whole problem of eating for human beings in a nutshell. The cattle are hardwired to eat grass. Koala bear is hardwired to eat eucalyptus. They don't have to think about it. We do, we have to think hard about it. And one of the things about mycology is you become really observant and you become aware that the <laughs> two stems are really different from each other. Mm. Plus, this one has this stuff at the base, and this doesn't have anything at the base. So this is an Amanita, and this one is a Melanoleuca. Let's suppose you have no clue, because I'm not here, and you find this mushroom, and you find the two things, and you say, oh, this is safe. I'm going to kick it home and eat it. And you do, and nothing happens. So you're lucky. <laughs> hey, they're both edible. <laughs> if we're Americans, we have a we have built-in resistance to mushrooms to begin with, because we were brought up to fear them, as in, watch out, you know, you could be poisoned. Whereas if you're in parts of Europe or Asia, that's the last thing you think of. The first thing you think of is, gee, maybe this is good. Right. And we are, you know, of a curious generation. We want to find out how edible is it? How dangerous is it? What happens? Maybe nothing. You'll let us know. I discussed it with Christina today, and if I'm going to die, I might as well die eating mushrooms. Or yeah, why not? Well, a lot of people are afraid of mushrooms. They're scary, you know. If you eat an Amanita of phylloides, that's it for you. There are ones that can kill you, but to be honest with you, there's berries in the woods that can kill you too. So it's, it's really a matter of knowing your mushrooms. So use all your senses in identifying mushrooms. Take it and smell the gills, it smells like radish. 
Elegant liparous. It's got a furry stem. Feel the gills, it'll be waxy. Oh wait, no, peppery aftertaste. Spit it out, spit it out. <laughs> yeah. Am I gonna die? Not immediately, but someday. <laughs> You know, once you start working with mushrooms, you get drawn in. And my allegiance has always been to plants. And over time, I got more and more interested in mushrooms. You folks have uh, not been in the old growth forest, have not gone on mushroom hunts, then it is one of the most satisfying experiences in life. You're out of nature, and it's like a giant Easter egg hunt for adults. And children can be involved. It just really puts in context the importance of mushrooms within the ecosystem. When I see a fungus, a mushroom, a bird's nest fungus, I feel plenitude. When I gave birth to my son 10 years ago, a friend called me, I was in the hospital, and said, what's it like? And I said, do you remember the puffball we found in Punta Arenas in Patagonia? She's like, yeah, and I said, it's like that. That's what it feels like. You know, it's just the only comparable feeling of giving birth for me is finding an, the encounter and coinciding with certain species of fungi. I see my species as part of a larger whole. Rather than being at the top of the pyramid, being one of the organisms within inside the circle. And the circle is made up of mycelium holding us all together. There's a huge subculture of mycophiles, of people who are fascinated with mushrooms. We love mushrooms! And they party together, and they hunt mushrooms together, and they eat mushrooms together, and they're sort of bloated pleasure seekers with a scientific bent. You know, really my kind of crowd. My name is Art Good Times. You know, when we come out of the mushroom festival, sometimes it's hard to find edibles because everybody here hunts mushrooms. If if this is supposed to be called an edible mushroom foray, here's the edible mushroom. Oh, yes. And this is an example of some of the stuff I picked on my walk for tonight's dinner. <laughs> my name is Katrina Blair. I got here by hiking from Durango over to Telluride, and it took about six days. So I know that when I've gone on my walk, I know that I'm going to be preparing a wild feast for 100 to 150 people. So my pack is usually very light, but as I approach Telluride, it gets heavier and heavier because I'm harvesting food and mushrooms when they're around to feed this amazing group of people for this feast. So we're going to start practicing saying Latin names, OK? <laughs> so let's all say Leucopaxillus. Leucopaxillus. Over there, we saw Tremades versicolor. Tremades versicolor. It's rare in science you have such um, powerful amateurs. Uh, this is turkey tail. You know, the great mycologists aren't all PhDs and they're not all associated with um, universities. They're in the woods and they're amateurs. Oh wow, me? this one's filled with uh, maggots. The meaning of the word amateur is a lover. That was something very distinctive about mushroom culture. And, uh, and I, was, I was drawn to that because of course I'm an amateur at everything I do. We're babies with this stuff. I mean, we, we like to puff up and think we know everything. We're going to explain everything about how the woods work and how these mushrooms work with the trees and all that. We don't know squat. We're just learning. Yeah. So, you know, come back in 50 years and see what we know then. Yeah. In fact, the same group yeah. here. Let's, let's meet again in 50 years. Yeah. Deal. Is that a deal? Absolutely. All right, good. Yeah.